Hey guys, today I just thought we'd take a look at this Polaris speedometer. It belongs to a friend of mine at work and it's not working at all. It's, it's making it where you can't go into the four wheel drive mode. Some known features of these, especially if they run without a battery, the voltage regulator gets too high. So these things are pretty notorious for failing. I'm gonna go around with this bicycle tire repair tool that I have and see if I can loosen up this aluminum ring. I'm gonna fast forward through the video here so you ain't gotta watch all this, but basically we're just taking that ring and open it up enough to slip it over. Slip it over the lip here and we should be in. Looks like we do have some line up tabs here. Let's remove this screw here. On well, second thought, that's just a seal. That's your calibration pot on the board. That actually does not have to be removed. Just trying to make sure it don't have a stop position here. And then let's go ahead and get the needle off. Let's see if we can lift up and get to the screws here. There's one at the bottom. It's six o'clock. Let's say 42 miles an hour is a screw. There's also one here at about eight, but I'm having trouble with this one. It, the face don't want to peel up and the plastic's actually broken. I'm just going to use something plastic here to push and pushing those pins in the connector, the board should slide out. And here we go. And boy, is it ugly. Looks like an M80 went off in this thing. There's a little desiccant capsules. We'll put them back. Look at the caps. They ruptured and sprayed all over the insides. Oh, we got a lot of failed components here. Transistors. Caps. Yeah, this, this ain't pretty. I was hoping just to have a voltage regulator or a transistor failure, but uh, this is gonna be pretty catastrophic. Hopefully, if something overvolted this board this bad, I'm hoping that the uh, CPU is actually still intact, still in good shape. That looks like a SCR. And here's the face of that transistor that blew off the board, the smaller transistor that we see that blew off there. Let's go ahead and take the face plate off and look at it a little closer. And doggone it, even the bulbs got so far over voltage that they melted. And look, they're blackened and mirrored. What the heck? So, we got our two lineup pins for the LCD. We'll leave it on there if it'll stay for now. Let's go ahead and get this face of this component. Yeah, it looks like we can see the numbers on it. Let's clean it up a little bit. It looks like this is a MPS A42. So we got that A42. We got all the bulbs. We got the components. I have marked the stepper motor in case we got to remove it. The little air core stepper motor, I've marked it as well in case we need to remove it later. I have marked the negatives here on the caps. I'm going to go ahead and remove some of this conformal coating on this board because it does smoke a lot and turn brown. We can definitely solder through it, but we'll try to get some of that off. So here I'm just going to use this little trick with the low melt solder. We'll go ahead and put low melt solder on the board. It'll mix it with the lead free solder so it'll be easier to remove. And especially with these uh, through holes and two-sided 
solder pads here. It'll help us pull them off without damaging the pad so easy. We're just going to add some flux here and then we're going to just pull the component right off because this, this low melt solder helps keep it liquefied a few seconds. It actually helps you be able to pull it with minimal heat. So adding leaded solder helps some and of course low temp solder even helps that much more. After I break this I loose from the board, the conformal coating, it pops right out. Now this transistor slid down and almost came out on its own, it looks like. So I'm going to try to use my desoldering gun here just to get the very tip. And then I'll put some heat at the top. And we'll try to pull this transistor out. This looks like a TIP48 transistor. And it does check shorted. So low melt solder helped that come right out. We're also going to remove this, the rest of what's left of this MPS A42. These are both MPN transistors. So that's four components removed. Well, had a pin left on that one. There we go. I'm going to go around and check the rest of the diodes here. Just in diode mode. So far, so good. Yep. Good. Good. Keep it going. Whoa. Look at this resistor right here. That's probably definitely opened up. Let's see. Oh, it definitely opened up. I have no idea what value that is. I have to search online. Hopefully somebody's got some pictures out there to help us out. That is not pretty. I'm going to go around and check this transistor here. Check it like it's two diode junctions here. And yep, that one looks good. Looks good. Looks good. I want to check this Zener diode here. It was really close to some other failed devices. And yeah, that looks like it's shorter to me. Let's, let's get the little component checker and see what it says. But we're going to lift one pin. We'll lift, it, we'll lift one pin and get it out of circuit. And then we'll use the component tester to see if it shows short or open or, or what value it could possibly be. Ah, zero millivolts. That's not looking good. Definitely shorted. So this looks to be a IN5245. So if we look this up online, this is a 15 volt half a watt diode. I'll probably replace it with a one watt. I have one that's 15.4 volts, it'll probably be fine. We'll use some alcohol and a brush cleanup. Get some solder wick here and just, just clean up the, the solder pads. And, and also with so much of the conformal coating around is turning brown, we'll get that cleaned off good too. Get the board all in good shape, prep for resoldering. At this point, I got a few components coming in for this that I, I just don't have. I didn't even have the, um, the exact capacitor, so it might be a little bit before I get back to it here. So we'll clean it all up. I'm having trouble finding bulbs too.
just going around let's check this other zener yep 5.6 probably right let's check this that i believe is a scr because it's on the pins that's going out for the four-wheel drive like it might be a s scr for outputting yeah thyristor so yep scr silicone control rectifier let's go ahead and put that 15.4 volt zener back in here and the caps that came in this is a 200 ohm resistor and um i'll share with you the the online site that helped me out with that tremendously they're able to figure out which which resistor that was so let's go under the microscope here and just show a little bit of soldering this back on we'll try to speed the camera up a little bit so you ain't got to watch it all but Let's speed this up a little bit. I'm just using some rosin flux here and I do like this small curved tip to get into some of these places. Surface mount as well as these through holes, still still a helpful tip, one of my favorites. It, it's not a lot of heat. It's gotta be transferred, of course. Let's clean it up a little bit and try to get some of that brown conformal coating off of there as well. And let's put in our tip 48, the high voltage MPN silicone power transistor here. The only thing special about this transistor is only a one amp, but it, but it is 300 volts being the 48 version. It is 300 volts, so it's, it's rated for high voltage. The small uh, MPN transistor is also rated for high voltage. Just getting enough solder here so we can straighten it up. Let's finish the job. I'm wanting the solder to flow through to the top side of the board as well. These have traces on both sides. And some of the traces were a tad bit damaged from all the high current when the transistors actually faulted and failed. So we're still hoping that the microcontroller is going to make it through this. That looks pretty good. So let's put in our MPS A42. Put a little flux on here. I do like the Antec type flux when I'm doing small components like this where I don't want the rosin flux to flow through the board so much, but I like them both. It's a little bit less cleanup with the Amtec, and the Amtec definitely flows very well. It makes the job so much easier. And let's give it a clean up. That's six components down. <laughs> Hopefully we won't find any more bad. So I do want to say that after testing, this speedometer did not work. I was not getting the microcontroller to work and the LCD did not come up. The pulse is in, give me no movement on the needle. So at this point, I want to share with you a site that really, really helped me out when you search for the Polaris, like sportsman speedometer or whatever. It's called KA70EI's blog. And I believe this is his amateur radio handle. But anyway, he's got a blog on here that has been super helpful on this Polaris speedometer. And the only thing negative about it is, is I didn't find it sooner. Um, so I definitely want to give him a shout out. Everything that I have worked to find with this and I was going to share on video, he honestly already had it there and probably then some. Um, information wise and I think most people are going to get to that point 
and no more than this. I don't know if he had a resistor damage, but anyway, his his picture on here tremendously helped me with the with the resistor because as you've seen in the video, the first part of the video, it was mine was burned up, so it helped me tremendously uh, find what resistor value it had with the picture that he shared and all the stuff that he shared and, and even the comments below helped a lot so please check out his blog and i want to tell him i appreciate what he's done there and i hope to get mine to the point where he's got his but i'm going to stop the video here because i got some other parts coming and if i have success i'll have a part two to this video but i actually have a bad voltage regulator as well as a low voltage precision air core tack and speedo driver the cs4121 chip mine is faulty so if i have any luck we'll have a second video about that but for right now i think that's long enough on this video and also i think most people according to his blog um a lot of people only find this much stuff burn up or bad i don't know how many people um i find one as torp as this one just happened to be um just our luck on this one but hopefully nobody else has to go any further but if they do i'll try to share more to come in the second video um, where we send a test signal to it maybe maybe get it working as long as the microcontroller is not dead so at this time we're just hoping and praying the microcontroller survived and maybe we'll get some more life out of this speedometer so i hope you found this video helpful today if you did please like share subscribe i'll definitely have some links down in this video description of some tools and interesting items that i find very helpful on my workbench and those are affiliate links and any link that you click on supports the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.